So with this presentation, I'm going to tr try to sell experimental methodology. And um, I, I hopefully by the end of it, I will inspire someone to do an online experiment as a part of the research. So I was looking into carbon tax, uh, for and against, and exploring behavioral influences in the UK context. Um, so inspiration for my project was, um, so I was an IP student last year, and uh, we talked a lot about carbon tax and why it is important in our net zero journey. And we heard success stories such as Sweden, where carbon experiment tax implementation was really successful and some of the more challenging stories such as like France where they received um, huge challenges while implementing it. So I looked into the literature around it and I found that most of the studies focus on either policy success or failure and there was kind of limited exploration in the context of like countries like UK which is a more in transition um, gradual transition towards implementation of carbon tax. So um, I was interested to know how to, what influences individual support for or opposition to carbon pricing, in particularly in voting behavior and going beyond self-reported attitudes. So my core research questions were, um, what behavioral factors uh, drive support or opposition to carbon tax? Um, so carbon tax knowledge, um, attitude, knowledge, overconfidence, social norm and loss aversion. I was also interested in behavioral mechanisms. So how can we employ framing strategies and political campaigns to shape voter confidence and their decisions? And it gives evidence-based guidelines for effective policy design and public communication strategies with uh, behavioral economic interventions. And it also fills a gap in understanding individual uh, voting behavior in the context as UK. Um, so why choosing an online experiment? So in behavioral economics, uh, experimental methodology usually comes from either lab field or online experiments. And there are several advantages of online experiments. So first of all, accessibility. So you use platforms like Prolific, Amazon Turk, Gorilla, which enables you to recruit global participants. You can control over demographics. So you can choose specific citizenship, age, gender, employment, and et cetera. Um, it also mimics natural decision-making environments. So for me personally, it was voting behavior and it has huge efficiency. So it is ideal for, but for low budget and time constraints, such as like master research. Um, and you can conduct large scale study quickly within like three months, even less, um, and relatively cost effectively. And also if you want to do, for example, your study in Australia, you don't need physically to travel there. So just to give you an example, um, how I designed my experiment. So I chose a randomized controlled trial methodology between subject design, and I had one control and two treatment groups. Um, so first of all, participants viewed a political poster with uh, a framing, control group received no framing, treatment one received positive trait framing, which was secure a healthier future with minimal change today. And treatment two group received negative framing, which was a small sacrifice for a larger course. Then they were asked to vote either for or against a political party that proposes introducing carbon tax only based on the posts that they were shown. Then I collected some demographic data. And uh, in the end, um, a questionnaire was given to them. So I was asking how confident they were about their vote. I was giving them a little test about uh, carbon tax knowledge to measure their understanding of carbon tax. And I was also asking them how confident they feel about the test they just received uh, how many scores they received to for me to measure their overconfidence of their knowledge and also i was looking into certain behavioral insights so i was exploring their carbon tax attitudes their environmental social norms uh, and also whether they perceive carbon tax as a loss or a gain so i have seven hypotheses uh, five of them worked two of them didn't work so just to give a quick overview, um, participants who had greater knowledge and they had positive attitudes toward carbon tax, they were more likely to vote for. Um, if participants, uh, friends and family, so social norms had positive environmental attitudes, they were also more likely to support carbon pricing. Um, if they were overconfident about their knowledge compared to their actual knowledge, uh, they're less likely to support carbon tax. Um, and as well as if they perceived carbon tax as a loss rather than a gain, uh, they were more against carbon pricing as well. My framing, both of them didn't work, didn't affect significantly voting behavior. However, an interesting finding was that if participants were 
exposed to positive framing, they were more confident of their vote if they voted for. Um, and vice versa, if they received negative framing, they were more confident of their vote if they voted against. So just to reflect on my personal experiences, um, so there are both challenges and excitements in running an online experiment. I'm gonna share my personal ones. So if you decide to do an online experiment, you should bear in mind that you may encounter technical difficulties. So you can't control platforms like Prolific and Amazon Turk. And sometimes customer support can be unresponsive and slow, which, um, which leads you to your research delay. Um, another point in designing an experiment is that statistical analysis must go hand in hand with your experimental design. So you should finalize your statistical models before their experiment, clearly defining your independent and dependent variables, variables so you ensure that you collect robust data. Um, and also time management, starting early and maintaining consistency is a very key part. Um, bearing in mind that this research taking in summer and it can be could be challenging to focus and being productive apart from that everything else is very exciting so seeing your research ideas come into real life it is incredibly rewarding personally um this also you provide results um that are very variable whether it's aligned with your expectations or could reveal unexpected findings um Another uh, realization that I came through my journey that experiments that fail to provide significant results, in your opinion, are equally valuable. So not knowing knowing what doesn't work is equally important as well. And also online experiments um, is, again, to mention again, it's a cost-effective and efficient way. So you as a master's student can, um, can do your research with limited resources and still make an impact. And I'm currently working to turn the dissertation into a paper. So I would um I would suggest you to ask, are you are you aiming to publish your dissertation afterwards? And it is a realistic a very, and a very rewarding next step. Um, and you could treat your dissertation as a stepping stone for contributing to academic literature. Um, if you do decide to do that, um, design your experiment with publication in mind. So ideally, no journal requirements understand their focus audience and what, what are the submission guidelines and you tailor that study design structure to meet those requirements accordingly. For example, some of the journals might prioritize replication studies or like replication experiments, or they might focus on more novel methodologies and new um, ideas. Um, so identifying your unique aspect of the research, what is the most unique aspect of your research and why is it important? And keep that in mind while designing the experiment. So you can craft a clear narrative for your future paper.